Good morning. <laughs> Greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and often sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality, into addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That's why we're here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure, because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, if you've got questions about ingredients, formulations, or if you have a success story you'd like to share, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, we want to hear from you. We welcome your calls. 844-236-6010 is our number, 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program or recommended on the program, please go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also check out benfuchsarchives.com. Thank you to Peter in the UK for setting that up. Peter, that, if you're listening, buddy, that is an awesome, awesome site, benfuchsarchives.com. Really appreciate you doing that. Uh, you can also, of course, sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the websites, or you can call 866-735-2470. And if you're interested in checking out our Truth Skin Health products, check out truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Take a look at our retinol 5% gel. Yes, 5% gel made with vitamin C. You're not going to see that anywhere, folks. You're not going to see 5% anywhere, and you're not going to see retinol with mega high doses of vitamin C anywhere, not to mention no preservatives, no fragrances, no oil, no silicon, no wax, no nothing that your skin doesn't use or doesn't need. All the Truth Treatment products are formula formulated that way, and that's the truth. That's why I call it the truth. Why should you have to pay for wax and silicon and oil, vegetable oil? By the way, the vegetable oil they use in skin health products, that ain't no food grade oil. You can't eat that oil. That's a degraded form of oil. If you see vegetable oil or trans or hydrogenated vegetable oil in your skincare product, I'm telling you folks, you're uh, potentially playing with fire, first of all. You're putting a rancid oil on top of your skin. But even aside from that, why would you pay for rancid oil? 10% of most skincare products, most moisturizing skincare products, and many anti-aging skincare products, if they say vegetable oil, somewhat, or somewhere around 10% of, of that product is going to be a oxidized, cosmetic-grade, degraded form of vegetable oil, and you shouldn't have to pay for that. All right, that's all I'm going to say about that. Got so much to talk about with fats, inflammation, anti-inflammation. Last program, we we're talking about veggies, particularly green leafy veggies which are some of nature's best sources of essential fatty acids, especially hard to find omega-3s. And the fat content is something that you, it's counterintuitive. If you just look at a, a, a blade of grass or a leaf of spinach, it certainly doesn't look fatty. But rest assured, it's loaded with good fats. It's one of nature's best sources, as I say, of, of omega-3 fats, these green leafy vegetables. It's also got carotenes and flavonoids, or phytonutrients, they call them, plant nutrients that are so important for skin health, for sun protection. Carotenes and flavonoids protect the leaf from the sun, and when we eat them, they protect our leaves from the sun. Our leaves are called skin cells. Our leaves are protected in the same fashion that the leaf on a, on a plant is protected, using flavonoids and carotenes that we get by eating them. This is why eating your sunscreens is so helpful. 
eating plants and veggies is like eating sunscreens. That's how nature designed us. That's how we're supposed to be protecting ourselves from the sun is from green leafy vegetables and other vegetables, other colored vegetables, not by slathering toxic sunscreens on and make no mistake about it. They're toxic with a capital T. I don't care what you heard from your dermatologist or anybody else. They're toxic with a capital T. On the other hand, flavonoids, carotenes, plant steroids, the fatty compounds and vegetables can be super helpful for skin health. Veggies are just ridiculously powerful foods, powerful, powerful foods. They don't look like much. They don't look substantial, but they are nature's most valuable, among nature's most valuable and important foods. I, I would make the case gram for gram. Well, I don't want to go there, but they're super duper powerful. Let's leave it at that. And I do think they should comprise the bulk of our calories, veggies, 50% or more of our calories should be veggie based, veggies, veggies, veggies. And you notice I said not, I didn't say fruits, fruits are not veggies, they're, they're distinct. Fruits are like ovaries for seeds or uteruses. They're a combination of an ovary and a uterus. They produce seeds, they store seeds, they nurture seeds. And they got lots of sugar to feed the seed. Yeah, there's some good stuff in fruit, absolutely. But there's lots of sugar. The peel is really where the good stuff is. Eat the peel. Throw out the fruit. Eat the peel. You'll be better off. On the other hand, veggies are the entire complex. The entire veggie complex is nutritive. Even the fiber, which is inert, is nutritive. Veggies are like little solar conversion devices. They produce solid matter from the sun, and that is pro probably... Uh, the, the single most incredible chemical reactions on in the universe, not on Earth, in the universe, in the known universe, the ability of a plant to turn the sun into physical matter is just, it's, there's no other way to say it but magic. It is magic how that happens. And, you know, it's not magic in the sense that we don't understand it because, well, we, actually we don't understand it. We can, we can see things happening, but how exactly it happens, nobody knows how that happens. That's magic. Anyway, phytonutrients, carotenes, flavonoids, these are all tremendously valuable nutrients for land animals. In this way, there's a relationship, a really interesting relationship between the animal kingdom and the plant kingdom. We're interrelated. We're connected. There's a circle. We depend on plants and plants depend on us. We depend on plants as a valuable source of nutrients, omega fats, carbohydrates, protein, carotenes, flavonoids, all of which the plant somehow manufactures from the sun. We depend on the, plants, uh, on the plant doing this. Even if animals don't eat plants, even if lions and tigers aren't, they're not plant eaters, they only eat meat, they're carnivores, but the animals that they're eating were eating plants. So somewhere along the, chain, along the food chain, it all starts off with plants, whether we're eating them directly or whether secondarily, like a, as a carnivore. Milk comes from plants. Animal flesh comes from plants. Eggs come from plants. All animal foods ultimately come from plants. But it goes both ways because animals ingest vegetation, secondarily or directly. And guess what? Manure... And what we excrete and don't use goes back into the earth, and then that feeds the plant. It's a big old circle, and that is pretty darn cool. Grass-fed animals protect, uh, uh, provide us with nutrients from the plant world. Animal, uh, animal, uh, uh, animals return the favor with manure and fertilizer, providing plants with nutrients that, that used to be part of them. And omega-3s are chief among these. And by the way, there's my favorite form of vegetation is ocean vegetation. I've said this yesterday. I was, was going to tell you about this, but I figured I'd talk about it today. Ocean vegetation, ocean grass. If grass is, if terrestrial grass, if earth grass is among nature's most powerful foods, ocean grass is exponentially more powerful than terrestrial grass. Ocean grass doesn't depend on the earth, it depends on the ocean. And man, you want to talk about the mother load of life force? That is the nucleus of it all, the ocean. And the things that grow on the ocean, they get the advantage of everything in the ocean. The earth is like barren compared to what's in the ocean in terms of nutritional value. Why do you think, if, you, if you're a scuba diver or if you watch those you know, oceanography tele, uh, TV shows, why do you think that there's all that life in the ocean? The ocean is the nucleus of the life force on planet Earth, and that means the matrix that everything is in, within, 
has got to have something going on there, and it certainly does. We'll talk about that when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back after this. Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. All right, we're back on the bright side. I am Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. Our number is 844 236 6010. 844 236 6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, if you have questions about nutrition or health or skin health or skin formulations, something you may have heard about or read about. We're here for you, 844-236-6010 is our number. Try to call in early so we get to as many calls as possible. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear us talk about or advertise on the program, you can head over to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com, or also benfuchsarchives.com. Order products right off the website or sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the website as well. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're talking omega-3s, omega-6s, fats, the ocean. On my bucket list is definitely to go scuba diving. Oh, my God, the life force that is in the ocean. The Danish author Isaac Dennison said, the cure for anything is salt water, sweat, tears, or the sea. And right he was. The ocean is packed, packed with electromagnetic energy and that electromagnetic energy is conducted via minerals yes minerals the uh, the uh, ocean the ocean water is like a highly charged electromagnetic battery that runs 70 percent of our planet and only crazy human beings are stupid enough to dump their trash in it even though the ocean is quite forgiving Seafood, by the way, is also very powerful, and unfortunately, we got to be careful with seafood these days, but seafood is an amazing source of nutrition, uh, easy to process nutrition, easy to process protein, omega-3 fats, and the aforementioned minerals, not to mention vitamins, B vitamins, uh, fatty vitamins, DEEK, just crazy, crazy valuable. Shrimp and uh, so-called bottom feeders, by the way, lobster, yes, they're bottom feeders. I know that, but they're also perfect protein. They're pure protein. Oh, but they have cholesterol. So what? They're some of the most powerful, dense foods you could eat is lobster and crab and shrimp, but they're insects. Yes, they're insects. And by the way, we're going to be eating insects like cockro- not, like uh, crickets, not cockroaches, hopefully, but crickets and uh uh, they're already doing it in, in Mexico. You can get little scorpions and, and crustaceans, little uh, terrestrial crustaceans stuck in your lollipops and in your tequila. But, but I'm talking about cricket protein. Yes, in about five, or five years probably, you're going to be able to go to the health food store and get a big old bag of cricket protein. Insect protein is set to be the next big thing, by the way. Ocean insects, of course, are shrimp and lobster, so-called bottom feeders. But much like cricket protein is going to be the, the next big thing, or the next thing, I don't know how big it'll be, but the next thing in health food stores and for people who want a good source of protein, well, ocean crickets, if you will, ocean insects like lobster and shrimp are packed with protein the same way. They're awesome foods, plus omega-3 fats. They have a special kind of omega-3 fats. Seafood has a special kind of omega-3 fat called EPA and DHA. Icosopentanoic acid, docosohexanoic acid, we call them EPA and DHA. EPA and DHA are key elements for brain health, key elements for the eyes, key elements for the central nervous system, key elements for a developing fetus, for a baby. Unbelievably important, and you're not going to find them if you're not eating sea, you're, you're seafood. Not, there's not very, algae has some. And that's uh, something that uh, food processors and nutritional supplement companies are working on is extracting these fats from algae. But it's been pretty difficult. Although I did, I, I, I'm starting to see algae oil, at least in terms of uh, availability to researchers, if not to the general public. But it's only a matter of time. Meantime, you've got to get your fish. You've got to eat fish and fish oil. And I know about mercury in the ocean. Yes, it's a problem. Toxins in the ocean are definitely a problem. But fish also has selenium in it. 
Fish is a good source of selenium, and for that matter, sulfur. And selenium and sulfur both have a protective effect against mercury. So it may not be all that bad. It, it, it's certainly not a good thing that we have mercury in the ocean, but it's still, in my opinion, not a reason to avoid fish. If you're pregnant, maybe you want to not eat it as much, but on the other hand, you get all these wonderful things for your baby. Iodine, too. Iodine's an ocean mineral. 